Hi there, this um, is Mr Evans with a video on inventory control. Um, so this is just introducing this section here, uh, looking at inventory. So um, the term in, terms inventory and stock tend to be used interchangeably, they mean the same thing. Um, inventory control is the management of an organisation's levels of level of stocks to enable it to match supply to demand. Um, and the stock that a business has would include three things. So the raw materials that have just arrived from the supplier, uh, they haven't done anything with them yet, um, but uh, they're ready to be transformed. Um, there is work in progress, which is the raw materials that have now uh, began the uh, transformation process, but aren't finished yet, they're not ready for sale. And finally, we've got finished goods, that the organisation is um, preparing to ship or uh, maybe holding, um, uh, but they're, they're essentially, they've been transformed from raw materials into the final product and they're ready to go. Um, and inventory control is the decision that a business will make whether to hire hold relatively high levels of stock, um, perhaps because uh, they're anticipating changes in demand, or relatively low levels of stock because the business doesn't want to um, have a whole lot of cash tied up in managing its stock levels. Um, we'll look at that in a bit more detail in just a minute. But um, just so an example from a bakery, we've got our raw materials here. Um, obviously an industrial baker would have far greater quantities of those raw materials. Um, but uh, once the transformation process starts, um, this is the work in progress where the uh, raw materials are being transformed into a final good. And um, there's our finished products that are ready to be sold. Um, so this, these are all considered as stock. Um, obviously in some manufacturing businesses, the transformation process would take far longer uh, than it does in the bakery. I would imagine that most of, once the transformation process begins in the bakery, um, you know, loaves of bread and cakes, it, generally they're not left uh, overnight, although um, I guess there would be some cakes set overnight. Um, but generally, uh, a car manufacturer or something would have a far longer uh, period between the business becoming the uh, materials, moving from raw materials to final goods. Um, so, looking at um, the benefits uh, of high versus low inventory levels, so holding quite a lot of stock, keeping quite a lot of stuff um, you know, in the production process um, has a number of advantages. Number one, it will enable you to meet unexpected changes in demand, so you are able to um, satisfy demand, keep your consumers happy. Um, any uh, issues with suppliers you will also be able to deal with, i.e. if um, you are dealing with a, maybe a slightly unreliable supplier or um, you know your supplier's workforce goes on strike, um, if you've got a whole load of um, raw materials you have, it, it gives you a bit of buffer time really in which you can um, look around for alternative supplies of goods or just wait for the supplier to sort out their issues. Finally, uh, holding high levels of inventory will allow you to buy it in bulk off your suppliers and therefore manage, uh, negotiate uh, discounts with them, um, known as economies of scale, where you, you purchase a larger amount of stock for a smaller uh, unit price. However, um, a business may choose to hold lower levels of inventory. Um, the uh, benefits of doing this are that there will be lower costs incurred in securing uh, and storing raw materials. So um, you've got to pay to refrigerate goods that will go off. You've got to uh, maybe uh, install security cameras, security guards in some case if your stock is particularly valuable. Um, you can minimise those costs um, if, uh, if you keep less stock. You know, if your stock is bulky, you're going to need warehouses and, and so on, and so keeping less stock will, will drive down your 
rent, I damage security costs, um, and make it uh, cheaper for you to run the business. Um, you're also going to have less money tied up in working capital. So working capital is the money that's used for the day-to-day -day running of the business, i.e. buy and stop paying wages. The um, less money you have tied up in stock, the more money you have to maybe invest in other um, uh, other ways that the business could operate, i.e. you know, if you've got thousands of pounds tied up in stock, that's thousands of pounds you can't have invested in better improved machinery, which may well improve the efficiency of the business. Finally, um, if you don't have huge levels of stock, there's less chance of stock becoming obsolete. So obsolescence occurs when stock goes out of date, um, happens with food, happens um, in technology, when technology moves on and you've still got a load of last year's models or whatever that you can't shift and um, holding low levels of inventory should reduce the chances of that happening. So um, the decision to hold high versus low levels of stock depends on um, a number of things, the nature of the product, um, if it goes off you'd be more uh, likely to try and hold low levels of that, if it's particularly theft attractive um, you'd be more likely to try and hold low levels. Um, on the other hand, if uh, demand is uh, fluctuating and difficult to predict, then keeping a high level of inventory would probably be a good idea, as it would if uh, you're dealing with unreliable suppliers. So that's a brief overview of inventory.